In 2004, at a high school in Semyung, South Korea, 18-year-old Dong Eun is severely bullied and harassed by a group of five students. Led by the cruel Yun Jin, they come up with nasty ways to hurt and humiliate her. They burn her skin with heated objects, causing permanent injuries, isolate her by spreading false rumors and publicly humiliating her. They show no remorse and take pleasure in her suffering. This constant abuse drives Dong Eun to the edge, and she reports it to the police. However, all five bullies are released without charges due to the influence of Yun Jin's mother, Hong Yun Ae, over the police. As the owner of a major construction company, Hong Yun Ae bribes the police to ensure no charges are filed. She then threatens Dong Eun, demanding that she stay silent or face severe consequences. The bullying continues for many months, and Dong Eun feels powerless because the police and judicial system seem to favor the wealthy. When her injuries worsen, Dong Eun visits the school nurse for medication. Seeing the extent of her injuries, the nurse advises her to report the bullies to the principal immediately. However, Dong Eun remains silent, knowing that there's no real solution to her problem. Meanwhile, Yun Jin appears behind the scenes and threatens the nurse, saying she can bully her anytime because the entire school administration supports her and she can do as she pleases. When Dong Eun returns to her small, shabby apartment, she is shocked to find all the bullies waiting for her at her home. They taunt her about her poverty and throw her money around. When she pleads with them not to throw her money away, they tell her she must dance if she wants it back. She refuses to dance, and in response, the bullies burn her skin with a hot iron, causing her immense pain. Feeling overwhelmed, Dong Eun decides to kill herself. As she is about to jump into the river, it starts to snow. She rubs the cold snow on her burned arms and legs, which provides her with a small amount of relief, though her heart remains deeply wounded. The next day, Dong Eun writes a letter to the principal requesting to withdraw from school. In her letter, she details how the bullies have harmed her and how no one is taking action to stop them. However, before the application can reach the principal's office, the class in charge and security officer, Kim Jong, who is a close friend of Hong Yun Ae, disposes of Dong Eun's letter. He tells her that the bullies did nothing wrong. When Dong Eun asks him if he would respond the same way if his own child were in her position, Kim Jong becomes enraged. He removes his expensive wristwatch and starts slapping her and humiliates her in front of everyone. Later that night, Hong Yun Ae and Kim Jong invite Dong Eun's mother, Mi Hee, who is a drug addict, along with her boyfriend. They offer Mi Hee a check for 1 million won and insists that she change Dong Eun's school withdrawal application to state that Dong Eun is mentally ill. Seeing the large sum of money, Mi Hee quickly agrees to the deal. When Dong Eun returns to her apartment, she finds her belongings outside and her room empty. She reads the revised application letter, which now states that she is leaving school due to mental illness. Heartbroken, Dong Eun feels as if she has lost everything and that even her own mother does not love her. Desperate, she heads to the riverbank to end her life. As she cries, she remembers she has one thing left to do before she dies, and that is to seek revenge. Dong Eun returns to the school, where the bullies are now tormenting another girl. Dong Eun confronts Yun Jin and mentions she read online about Yun Jin's dream of becoming a good wife and mother. She then points out that the other bullies have their own ambitions. Lee Sa Rae wants to be a famous painter, Hai Jong aims to be a flight attendant, Jae Jun plans to take over his father's golf club, and Mai Mo wants to become a wealthy businessman. She wonders why Yun Jin's dream is so basic. Yun Jin laughs it off, saying dreams are for the poor and she already has everything she wants. She just wants to live a life that others will envy. When Yun Jin asks Dong Eun about her own dream, she responds that her dream is Yun Jin herself, leaving the bullies stunned. Later, Dong Eun starts working at a textile factory and studies hard at night to prepare for college. Song Hee, a fellow worker, notices Dong Eun's dedication and makes sure to put her shoes outside and walk quietly to avoid disturbing her. This routine continues for three years, and in 2007, Dong Eun is accepted into a prestigious college. On her last shift at the textile factory, she thanks Song Hee for being considerate and not disturbing her while she was studying. Song Hee congratulates Dong Eun on her acceptance into college. Once at college, Dong Eun studies diligently, but her primary goal is to exact revenge on Yun Jin and the others. Every night, she carefully plans the best ways to get her revenge. Meanwhile, Yun Jin is spending time with her boyfriend, 
Jae Joon. She confides in him that her parents are arranging her marriage to a wealthy businessman. Jae Joon, who is a playboy, isn't upset and simply says he can find another woman. Years later, Yun Jin marries Ha Du Yang, a wealthy businessman and CEO of JPM Construction Company. She is thrilled with the marriage. Jae Joon also attends the wedding and watches Yun Jin with a lustful gaze. Meanwhile, Dong Eun secretly observes the ceremony. Later, Dong Eun checks Facebook and sees what the bullies are up to now. Lee Sa Rae is a famous painter. Jae Joon has taken over his father's golf club. Yun Jin is a well known TV weather forecaster, and Hai Jong is a flight attendant. Mai Young Oh, however, has done little and now works for Jae Joon, who often scolds and beats him, saying they're no longer friends but boss and employee. Then, Song Hee tries to talk Dong Eun down, suggesting that seeking revenge is harmful and that she should forgive the bullies. But Dong Eun is determined to get legal revenge at any cost. She visits the library every day to read crime novels and fuel her resolve. Later, Dong Eun is giving private tutoring at a student's home when the boy begins to flirt with her. Experienced in handling such situations, she had started a voice recording before the session. The boy is shocked when he realizes she's recording. Dong Eun sends the recording to the boy's mother and then leaves the house. As she steps outside, Dong Eun starts having convulsions and collapses on the road. She is rushed to the hospital and given an IV. When she wakes up, she finds herself in a hospital bed next to a handsome man, Yeo Jong, a resident in plastic surgery who is also receiving an IV due to injuries from a fight. They share a brief look, but Dong Eun suddenly tries to remove her IV, Yeo Jong calms her down, explaining that he is a doctor and will remove the IV safely. While removing it, Yeo Jong notices scars on her arms, which she quickly hides by pulling down her sleeves. She then rushes out of the hospital. A consultant arrives with her reports and asks Yeo Jong about her whereabouts. He informs them that she left a minute ago. Upon reviewing her reports, Yeo Jong discovers that she is severely anemic. Yeo Jong reads Dong Eun's details from her ID card, which she accidentally left at the hospital, and decides to visit her at college. When Dong Eun sees him, she smiles warmly and walks toward him causing him to be astonished. However, his surprise turns to disappointment when he realizes that she is actually smiling at another boy, Kim Suhan, who is the son of Kim Jong, the teacher who severely abused Dong Eun in high school. This encounter marks the beginning of Dong Eun's plan for revenge. Meanwhile, Young Jin is spending time with her husband, Du Yang. Du Yang mentions that he overheard a conversation between Hai Jong and Jiante at a bar, where Hai Jong was gossiping about Yun Jin's past. When Yun Jin presses for details, Du Yang changes the subject, casually mentioning that Hai Jong merely said she scored higher marks than her in school. It's clear that Du Yang is hiding something, leaving her concerned. Despite her worry, she laughs it off and starts smoking a cigarette. But when her eight-year-old daughter, Yi Sol, comes home from school, Yun Jin quickly extinguishes the cigarette. Du Yang lovingly embraces Yi Sol and asks her how her day was. The next day, Yun Jin invites Lee Sa Rae and Hai Jong to her house. Hai Jong arrives wearing an expensive dress that she rented from a local store. Yun Jin and Lee Sa Rae mock Hai Jong for wearing such a pricey outfit despite not being wealthy. They can clearly tell that the dress is rented. Yun Jin looks down on Hai Jong and warns her never to speak about her behind her back, insisting that she should know her place. Though Hai Jong is initially upset by their condescending remarks, she soon recovers and begins taking selfies in the rented dress, posting them on social media. The scene shifts to Dong Eun stepping out of the college library and into the park, where she accidentally bumps into Yeo Jong. He apologizes for following her but explains that he's there to give her the medical report she left behind at the hospital. He tells her that she is severely anemic and needs to take medication for six months. During their conversation, he asks if she knows how to play the game Go. She admits she doesn't know but expresses a strong interest in learning, as she wants to become an expert strategist. He agrees to teach her and seems pleased at the opportunity to interact with her regularly. However, she insists on a formal teacher-student relationship, and he agrees to keep things professional. As weeks go by, they meet in the park every evening to play Go. Yeo Jong teaches her each move and also ensures she takes her medication regularly. One day, after mastering the game, she tells Yeo Jong that she's very grateful for his help and believes he'll become a great doctor. She then says she won't see him again because she has to pursue her dream. Yeo Jong is upset by the news and hesitantly asks what her dream is, but she doesn't give a clear answer. Yeo Jong says he hopes she succeeds in whatever she's aiming for, and then she leaves. Months later, 
Dong Eun has completed her degree and passed her teaching qualification exams, allowing her to apply for teaching positions. While pretending to shop for shoes, Dong Eun runs into Myo No, one of the high school bullies, who is now working as a salesman. Myo No was surprised to see her and flirts, noting how much she's changed. Dong Eun reveals that she knows how much she resents Jae Joon for being so bossy and shares her plan. She offers him a substantial sum of money if he can provide details about Jae Joon's affair with Yun Jin. Though Myo No was initially skeptical, he agrees to help because he is eager to bring Jae Joon down. Dong Eun has now found a new apartment close to Yun Jin's home. Every day, she stands outside and stares at Yun Jin's house while scratching the scars she left on her. Each night, according to her plan, she checks the dustbin outside the director of the Ministry of Education's home, looking for evidence of his corruption. One night, she is caught by the housemaid, Hyun Nam. She offers Hyun Nam money to keep quiet, but to her surprise, Hyun Nam says she won't report her and is actually willing to help. However, she demands one thing in return, that Dong Eun kills her husband. Hyun Nam's husband is a drug addict who comes home every night to threaten and beat her. He abuses her so severely that Hyun Nam's daughter has to intervene with a knife but the father brutally attacks both of them. Dong Eun witnesses this from outside and decides to hire Hyun Nam for her own purposes, offering her a separate apartment to live in. Dong Eun gives Hyun Nam a job to spy on the bullies, providing her with a camera to record evidence. Hyun Nam diligently monitors the bullies' daily routines and shares the classified intel with her each night in a parking lot. From this information, Dong Eun discovers that Jae Joon is colorblind. She recalls a high school incident where Jae Joon seriously injured a student who called him colorblind. The scene shifts to an arcade house where Do Young frequently plays Go. He observes Dong Eun there, defeating numerous opponents and earning thousands of wands and bets. Impressed by her strategic skills, he returns home to practice the game. When Young Jin notices his obsession with Go and suggests he relax, he explains that he's focused on defeating someone. She invites him to spend time with her, but he is so engrossed in the game that he barely responds. Later, Dong Eun is traveling to another city for an educational conference when she unexpectedly encounters Yeo Jong on the train. He is delighted to see her, and they sit down to chat. He congratulates her on passing the teaching qualification test, and Dong Eun returns the congratulations for his success in completing the residency program. Yeo Jong reflects on the time they spend in the park, mentioning how challenging it was for him but how her presence and support helped him overcome his difficulties. He expresses his gratitude and hands her his card, offering to help her whenever she needs it. After the conference, when she returns to her apartment, the owner questions her about why she pays the rent but seldom stays there. She explains that she is working on transferring to Semiyang High School so that she can live in the apartment more frequently. Later, Dong Eun gathers substantial evidence of the corruption involving the director of the Ministry of Education. She confronts him in person, presenting the evidence and blackmailing him. She demands that he assign her to the same school where Yun Jin's daughter is studying, threatening to expose his corruption to the media if he refuses. The director, feeling cornered, reluctantly agrees. The scene shifts to a high school alumni ceremony at Semiyun High School where all the former students, including the five bullies, are invited. Dong Eun arrives at the ceremony and encounters her former tormentors. At first, they struggle to recognize her due to her transformation into a sophisticated and elegant woman. However, when Dong Eun reveals her name, they start to recall who she is. She congratulates them on achieving their dreams. Yun Jin, surprised to see her, remarks that she thought she might have died or ended up in the slums. She inquires whether Dong Eun has achieved her own dreams. Dong Eun responds that she is still in pursuit of her dream. The ceremony begins, and Yun Jin is presented with an award. Dong Eun loudly praises her, causing everyone to grow uneasy. After the ceremony, Yun Jin angrily slaps her for being so dramatic. Jae Joon intervenes, asking Dong Eun to leave. Dong Eun says they haven't changed at all. Jae Joon responds that she has changed a lot, pointing out her colorful style compared to her dull past. Dong Eun mocks him for his colorblindness, saying he wouldn't recognize what colorful means. Jae Joon is left stunned as she walks away. Dong Eun's plan succeeds, and she gets appointed as a teacher at the school where Yun Jin's daughter, Yi Sol, is studying. One day, Yi Sol tells Yun Jin that her previous teacher has been replaced by someone who is a friend of her mother. When Yun Jin learns that the new teacher is Dong Eun, she is horrified and goes to the school to confront her. 
Dong Hun recalls all the traumatic experiences Yun Jin caused her and says she intends to make her suffer. She assures her that she won't harm her daughter but will use Yi Sol to exact her revenge. Yun Jin threatens to transfer her daughter to another school, but Dong Hun counters that she will follow Yi Sol wherever she goes. Angrily, Yun Jin accuses her of being low and leaves. Shortly after, Yun Jin receives a text that the previous teacher, Kim Jong, has died. Terrified, she looks at Dong Noon and calls her a murderer. Dong Noon clarifies that she didn't kill Kim Jong, he died of natural causes. Dong Noon recounts visiting Kim Jong at his home with a bouquet of flowers to congratulate him on his son, Kim Suhan's promotion to head security officer. Kim Jong, who is allergic to flowers, initially fails to recognize her. When she reminds him of the day he hit her after removing his precious wristwatch, he remembers and angrily smashes the bouquet on her, wishing he had killed her then. Kim Suhan arrives just in time to push his father inside the house. She reveals to Suhan that his father was involved in corruption and that she exposed his scandal, which could affect Suhan's promotion. Suhan is stunned by the revelation. In a dramatic turn of events, Suhan gathers a large number of flowers in the living room, deliberately creating a suffocating environment. Kim Jong, struggling to breathe, tries to take his medication, but it falls to the floor. Suhan, with a cold heart, throws the medications away, declaring that this is the result of all his wrongdoings. And as a result, Kim Jong suffocates to death. Devastated and angry, Yun Jin leaves after hearing the truth and cries in frustration. Later, Dong Eun visits a local cafe where she meets the old school nurse who once treated her wounds. She is delighted to see her, as the nurse was one of the few who understood her pain during that time. The nurse provides her with details about So Hee, a girl who was tormented by the bullies before Dong Eun. So Hee was rumored to have committed the unthinkable, but Dong Eun knows she was murdered by the bullies. She recalls seeing So Hee at the pharmacy where she used to buy medicine as So He had also been burned by the bullies. She feels regretful for not supporting So He back then. The nurse wishes her luck and expresses hope that she will uncover the truth and bring the bullies to justice. Moved by the nurse's words, she vows to complete her mission at any cost. Later, Dong Eun meets with Mai Ono, who shares classified information about Lee Saare's drug account and Hai Jong's personal affairs. In return, she provides him with information about So He offering him a chance to earn millions if he can uncover the truth about Sohee's death. He visits the mortuary to inquire about Sohee's body. The doctor informs him that the body cannot be released without permission from the family. However, the family is unwilling to bury the body, viewing it as a homicide rather than a self-harm. The doctor reveals that Sohee's body has been in the freezer of the mortuary for over 10 years, and the accumulated bills amount to more than a million wands. If Mayano can persuade the family to address the situation, he could claim a share of the money. Mayano, thrilled by the opportunity to earn a substantial sum, is eager to take on the challenge. A few days later, Yun Jin visits Semyon High School to meet with the principal. She inquires about Dong Eun's qualifications, questioning whether she is truly fit for the teaching position. The principal reassures her that Dong Eun's CV is impressive and that she is overqualified for the role. Additionally, Dong Eun has been highly recommended by the Minister of Education. This information surprises Yun Jin, who is curious about her connection with the minister. Later, Yun Jin heads to Yi Sol's classroom and is startled to find Dong Eun standing behind her daughter. Terrified, Yun Jin waits for the class to end and then confronts Dong Eun privately. In their meeting, Yun Jin offers to pay her any amount of money to end the cycle of revenge and admits she will not apologize for her past wrongdoings. Dong Eun coldly responds that she does not seek an apology. She has spent 18 years planning her revenge, and she intends to make her suffer slowly and deliberately, like a slow poison. Dong Eun then reveals a drawing made by Yi Sol, noting that the child has difficulty differentiating colors. She uses this as leverage, stating that she knows who Yi Sol's biological father is and threatens to expose the affair to her husband, Ha Du Yan. Yun Jin is left speechless, unable to counter her allegations. Later, Yun Jin talks to Du Yang about sending Yi Sol abroad for her studies. Du Yang is confused by this idea and asks why Yi Sol needs to go away so young. She vaguely mentions her dissatisfaction with Yi Sol's new teacher but doesn't give a clear reason and quickly changes the subject. That night, Du Yang finally gets to play Go with Dong Eun, who he has wanted to beat for a long time. He loses their first game and ends up 20,000 won short. Determined, he raises the stakes to 50,000 won for a rematch. During the second game, he asks her why she loves Go so much. 
She explains that it helps her become a better strategist and outsmart her opponents. He finds her answer intriguing but confusing. After the game, he follows her to a bakery and gives her his contact card, showing that he is impressed with her skills. This is part of dong -un's plan to use Du Yang's interest to her advantage. Meanwhile, Haiyan Nam steals Hai Jong's phone at the airport, allowing dong -un to access all the personal details and weaknesses of the other bullies. At the same time, Hai Jong has managed to get a wealthy man, Taewook, to marry her and buy her expensive jewelry. However, Taewook's mother doesn't like her and demands her medical reports to check for sexually transmitted diseases. Hai Jong gets the checkup and brings the reports to Taewook's mom, who still isn't impressed. Then, Dong Eun shows up and congratulates Hai Jong on her upcoming wedding. Hai Jong is shocked and follows her to her car. She asks her for a private chat, kneels, and apologizes for her past actions, saying she was just following Yun Jin's orders. She begs her not to ruin her marriage, as it's her last chance to marry a wealthy man and secure her future. Dong Eun pulls out a burning piece of wood from the furnace and holds it towards Hai Jong making her scared. She asks her if it's hot and questions where her humanity was when she used to burn her. She then throws the stolen phone on the ground and reveals she knows all of her personal details. Hai Jong is shocked and agrees to do anything she asks as long as her secrets stay hidden. Later, Dong Eun visits Lee sa -ra at the church and threatens to expose her drug addiction and her connection with Myono if she doesn't cooperate. Shocked, Lee sa -ra tries to escape. But Dong Eun grabs her by the hair and demands that she fill a bag with dollars if she wants to avoid being caught. That evening, Dong Eun finally responds to Yeo Jong, who has been texting her for years. Yeo Jong, tired from work and always daydreaming about her, is amazed and excited when he gets her message. He asks his colleagues if he's dreaming. Dong Eun has asked for a medicine, which turns out to be Viagra for erectile dysfunction. Yeo Jong is puzzled and worried that she might be with another man. However, she clarifies that she needs the information for another reason and just wanted to apologize for her past behavior. Realizing she might be saying goodbye, he begs her to stay with him, offering to do anything for her. She smiles genuinely for the first time, touched by his love. She tells him she needs a warrior to stand by her and help with her cause, and he agrees to support her in every way. Days later, Yeo Jong is having lunch with his mother, Sang Im, who is the director of Seoul General Hospital. He mentions that he wants to move to Semyong and start a private practice there. She asks why he wants to leave Seoul, and he replies that the girl he likes lives in Semyong, and he wants to be close to her. She agrees, saying he can do whatever makes him happy. He then hands his resignation letter to her. She becomes skeptical, suspecting that he might have written a love story as the reason for his resignation, and playfully slaps him, saying he should provide a more formal reason for leaving. Meanwhile, Yun Jin is terrified and praying at a temple. Hong Yun Ae asks her what happened, and she explains that Dong Noon has come for revenge. Hong Yun Ae reassures her, saying she will handle the situation. She promises to shut Dong Noon down by reaching out to her contacts and the police. Rumors about Yun Jin's bullying have spread on social media and her colleagues at the news channel are gossiping about her. Overhearing them, Yun Jin loses her temper and confronts one of her colleagues. She reminds them that the news channel is funded by her husband, Du Yang, who donated 220 million won. She warns that if the negative coverage continues, their jobs might be at risk and tells them to keep quiet. Later that night, Yun Jin meets with Shin Yun Jun, a police officer and friend of Hong Yun Ae. She offers him a large sum of money to gather information about Dong Eun. Meanwhile, Dong Eun is alerted by Hai and Nam that someone is following her car. To escape, Dong Eun speeds up, but after a while, she suddenly stops, causing the car behind to bump into hers. Two men get out and demand compensation, claiming she braked abruptly. In the parking lot, Hai and Nam checks if Dong Eun is okay. Dong Eun becomes suspicious questioning how she knew about the followers. Haiyan Nam explains she was spying on Yun Jin and suddenly saw the car following her. She reassures her that she meant no harm and brought food out of concern. Realizing her mistake, Dong Eun thanks Haiyan Nam and leaves. At a mechanic shop, Dong Eun sees meat roasting and has a flashback to how the bullies used to burn her. Overcome with emotion, she collapses and receives help from bystanders. Later, Dong Eun visits Yeo Jong at his new house in Semyon, where he is surprised to see her covered in mud. He asks what happened, and she explains that to understand, he needs to go back 18 years to when everything began. She recounts how the bullies tortured her and shows him her burned scars. Shocked, Yeo Jong vows to help her seek revenge no matter what. 
Yeo Jom offers to treat her scar marks since he's a plastic surgeon, but she refuses, saying she wants to keep the scars as evidence of her innocence. He then gives her new clothes and repairs her old ones, using a button from his own shirt because her old button was lost when she collapsed. As she talks about her plan, Yeo Jong reflects on his own painful past. He remembers the day his father, the director of Seoul General Hospital, was brutally murdered. The killer, who had previously murdered three people, had been refused treatment by other doctors. Yeo Jong's father had volunteered to help. But during the operation, the murderer killed him with a scalpel. The murderer still sends him letters from prison, telling him about the pleasure he took in killing his father. He kept this a secret from his mother until she discovered the letters herself. Shocked and furious, she went to the jail to confront the murderer, demanding to know why he continues to torment her family. The murderer reveals he takes pleasure in traumatizing her and intends to do so for the rest of his life. Enraged, she tries to attack him but is stopped by the prison guards. The scene shifts to Jae Joon receiving a delivery from an anonymous source. The note indicates that it contains crucial evidence. Inside, he finds medical reports stating that he is the biological father of Yi Sol. The next day, he visits Yi Sol at her school and tries to hug her, but she shows no interest. Jae Joon then contacts a lawyer to discuss gaining custody of Yi Sol. The lawyer explains that, despite being her biological father, he cannot claim custody because Yi Sol was born after Du Yang and Yun Jin's marriage. The only way he could gain custody is if Du Yang divorces Yun Jin. Furious, Jae Joon confronts Yun Jin and demands to know why she kept the truth about their daughter a secret. Yun Jin is taken aback, realizing he knows he's Yi Sol's father. Jae Joon insists that Yun Jin should divorce Du Yang and come live with him. The next day, Yi Sol tells Du Yang about a parent teacher meeting at school and asks him to attend. He is surprised to learn that the new teacher is Da Noon. At the parent teacher meeting, Du Yang is present in the classroom when Jae Joon also arrives. Jae Joon tells Du Yang that there is a child in the class who belongs to him. When Da Noon enters the room, Jae Joon begins to talk to Du Yang about how he used to bully her in the past and how she is now teaching his child. Later that night, Du Yang sees old pictures of Yun Jin with Jae Joon and others. He starts to doubt her and asks how she knows Jae Joon. Yun Jin insists that Jae Joon was just an old friend and that they had no special relationship. But Du Yang doesn't believe her and leaves. Later, Yun Jin checks the car and sees through the location map that Du Yang has actually met with Jae Joon at his place. This puzzles her. If Du Yang knows about their relationship, their marriage might not survive. While giving Yi Sol a bath, Yun Jin asks why she didn't mention the parent teacher meeting. Yi Sol replies that she did tell her, but Yun Jin must have forgotten. At the school, Jae Joon tries to flirt with Da Noon, but she slaps him. Infuriated, he warns her that if she harms Yi Sol in class, there will be severe consequences. Da Noon, however, states that she has no interest in harming his daughter. Her only goal is to get revenge on Yun Jin. She suggests that if Jae Joon helps her, it will be beneficial for both of them. Before leaving, she gives Jae Joon a drawing by Yi Sol, showing that she cannot differentiate between colors, just like Jae Joon, who is colorblind. After her meeting with Jae Joon, Da Noon feels nauseous and goes to the bathroom to vomit. She anxiously scratches her scars, remembering the time when Jae Joon used to bully her, making her stand in the rain and body shaming her. The next day, Da Noon meets Lee Sa Rae at the church to collect the money she demanded. Lee Sa Rae hands over a bag full of dollars and asks Da Noon to leave her alone. Da Noon responds that Lee Sa Rae's sins cannot be forgiven so easily, which makes Lee Sa Rae anxious and angry about Da Noon's next move. Dong Noon then gives all the money to Haiyan Nam, saying she wants Haiyan Nam's daughter to study abroad in the US. Haiyan Nam is overjoyed and thanks Dong Noon tearfully. Meanwhile, Du Yang meets with Hai Jong at a fancy restaurant and inquires about Yun Jin's past. Hai Jong, now on Dong Noon's side, reveals the details of Yun Jin's bullying in her past relationship with Jae Joon. Du Yang is shocked by how cruel Yun Jin truly was. The next day, Du Yang visits the local park where he has set up a go game arena. There, he meets Yeo Jong for the first time. Yeo Jong challenges him to a game of go and hints that he has come from Seoul seeking revenge. Du Yang is puzzled by why a stranger would share such a secret with him. However, this is part of Dong Moon's plan, and Yeo Jong is acting on her instructions. Later at home, Du Yang questions Yun Jin about her past. He mentions that someone has told him she used to be a bully and had a relationship with Jae Joon. Yun Jin dismisses these as fake rumors and insists he should forget about the past. She then attempts to seduce him, 
but he is clearly not interested. Later, Yun Jin receives details about Dong Un's education and family history from Officer Shin and devises a plan. She goes to Dong Un's apartment and by bribing a worker, manages to unlock Dong Un's room. To her surprise, she discovers that Dong Un has been living next door for over a decade and observing her daily life without her knowledge. The walls of Dong Un's room are covered with pictures of Yun Jin and her gang, leaving Yun Jin stunned. Meanwhile, Du Yang invites Dong Un to the park and asks her to share her story. She explains everything and asks him to divorce Yun Jin so that she can suffer. Du Yang expresses that he doesn't want to divorce Yun Jin but agrees to help Dong Un find justice. Dong Un provides Du Yang with the location of her apartment and tells him he will see something interesting there. When Du Yang arrives, he is surprised to find that Yun Jin is already there. This confirmed to Du Yang that Yun Jin indeed had some connection with Dong Un in the past and is now at Dong Un's place to remove evidence. Yun Jin, puzzled, starts to doubt Du Yang, wondering how he ended up at Dong Un's apartment and if he has something going on with her. Du Yang doesn't respond, and Yun Jin storms out angrily. Later, at the office, Du Yang receives a flash drive containing a message from Mai Ano. In the message, Mai Ano states that if Du Yang wants to know details about Yun Jin's past lovers, he should come to meet him. Du Yang goes to Mai Ango's shop, only to find out that Mai Ango has been missing for several days. Before disappearing, Mai Ango had contacted every bully to inquire about So He, a fellow student at Semian High School who was declared a self-harm case. It turns out that, before going missing, Dong Moon had informed Mai Ango about the truth behind So He's death that she was murdered and that one of the bullies was responsible. Dong Un had also provided Mai Ango with evidence, including fingerprints. The last person Mai Ango met before his disappearance was Yun Jin. The bullies gather together and discuss whether Mai Ango had asked them about So He's case. Yun Jin, now terrified, begins to laugh maniacally, claiming that Mai Ango had no evidence of So He's murder and that they were all involved in it. On the other hand, Dong Un goes to meet Yun Jin at the news channel's cafeteria. Dong Un presents her with all the evidence necessary to put her behind bars for So He's murder. She offers Yun Jin one last chance. If Yun Jin confesses her crimes and turns herself into the police, she will ensure that she receives a lighter sentence. However, Yun Jin rejects the offer, ridiculing Dong Un and saying she should have killed her back then instead of just bullying her. Later, Dong Un reports Yun Jin's crimes to Officer Chul detailing the incident from 18 years ago. She explains that a student's badge with Yun Jin's name was found at the scene where So He died. However, due to Yun Jin's mother Hong Young Ae's influence in the police, the badge was confiscated and hidden. Officer Chul says he needs more evidence to pursue the case. Dong Un recalls meeting So He's deaf and mute mother in the hospital. She had pleaded with her in sign language for help but the she was unable to assist at the time. Dong Un then visits the school nurse's home to gather more information about So He. She discovers So He's medical report and learns that So He was pregnant at the time of her death. The nurse overcomes with emotion and asks her to seek justice for So He. They emotionally embrace each other. Later, as Dong Un is removing pictures from the walls of her room, she notices something missing. She realizes that Yun Jin has taken the picture of Hai Nam's husband. Indeed, Yun Jin finally locates Hai Nam and takes further steps to cover her tracks. Yun Jin blackmails and physically tortures Hai Nam, threatening to kill her daughter if she doesn't start working for her. She also offers to kill Hai Nam's husband faster than Dong Un could. Overwhelmed and with no other options, Hai Nam reluctantly agrees in front of Yun Jin, but she remains loyal to Dong Un in her heart. Later, Hai Nam informs Dong Un about Yun Jin's threats and Dong Noon advises her to play a double role to trap Yun Jin. Dong Noon takes Hai Nam's daughter to the school nurse's house to keep her safe from Yun Jin. Meanwhile, Yun Jin finds Dong Noon's alcoholic mother Mihi and offers her money to force Dong Noon into quitting her teaching job. Tempted by the money, Mihi agrees. She immediately travels to Dong Noon's place, and Dong Noon is clearly displeased to see her. She struggles to control her anger, as her drunken mother, who had betrayed her for money in the past, has now entered her apartment. Dong Un tells her mother that she is leaving the apartment, but Mi He insists she will follow her wherever she goes. Meanwhile, at Yeo Jong's plastic surgery clinic, Hai Jong comes in for treatment. Yun Jin follows her and scolds her for revealing her relationship with Jae Jun to Du Yang. Hai Jong responds that she not only disclosed that but also what she did to Dong Un and the others. 
As they are about to get into a fight, Yeo Jong intervenes and tells them to calm down. Later, Yun Jin asks Duyang why he met with Hai Jong and Dong Un personally and if there's something going on between him and them. Duyang becomes infuriated and says that he just wants to uncover the truth, which Yun Jin has been hiding for over a decade. He insists that he will bring justice to whoever the culprit is. The next day, Duyang invites Dong Un to his business headquarters. Before entering, the guards ask Dong Un to remove her overcoat. When she takes it off, everyone present is astonished by the extensive burnt scars covering her body. Meanwhile, Yun Jin goes to Yeo Jong's clinic for a jawline operation. As she is about to be put under general anesthesia, Yeo Jong quietly asks her what she did to Mayo No. She starts to recall the events. It was October 11, 2022 when Myung Oh had invited Yun Jin to his store to discuss something important. Initially, she had refused due to her busy schedule, but after his persistent insistence, she agreed to meet him and told him he had only one minute to speak. She noticed that he was recording their conversation on his phone and quickly turned off the recording. Myung Oh then revealed that he had evidence proving she was responsible for So He's death. This made her extremely fearful. Myung Oh laughed at her and began making ridiculous offers if she wanted to protect herself. Infuriated, Yun Jin struck him repeatedly with a champagne bottle, almost killing him. Before dying, Myung Oh scratches Yun Jin's foot with his nails. Terrified and confused, Yun Jin calls Officer Shin for help to remove Myung Oh's body. Officer Shin and his team transport the corpse to a remote location. Shifting to the recent scene, Yun Jin wakes up from the general anesthesia and becomes anxious. She fears that the doctors may have tampered with her body. She checks herself from head to toe. Yeo Jong reassures her that these feelings are likely hallucinations, a normal reaction after general anesthesia. Later, Hai Jong receives a voice recording from Maya Noah's phone, which indicates the meeting between Yun Jin and Maya Noah on October 11th. She sends the recording to Jae Jun, who is also taken aback. He goes to Maya Noah's store and demands the video recordings from October 11th from the assistant, Guan Hai Yun. She informs him that Yun Jin had instructed her to delete the files from that date and she complied. However, she notes that the files might still be in the junk bin for 30 days before being permanently deleted and will require a professional to restore them. Jae Joon then consults a professional to help retrieve the videotapes. The professional is busy and tells him it will take a week. Jae Joon, however, offers him a large sum of money to complete the task within three days due to the urgency of the situation. Jae Joon, now suspecting Yun Jin of being a murderer, ends his relationship with her and invites Hai Jong to his house. He proposes that she become his wife and take care of Yi Sol for him. Hai Jong agrees, and they begin an intimate relationship. Meanwhile, Hai and Nam is rushing to the airport to bid farewell to her daughter who is leaving for the U.S. for her studies. Suddenly, Yun Jin rushes into her home and demands the details she had ordered her to obtain from Dong Noon. She initially refuses to disclose the information, but Yun Jin threatens her, stating that she knows her daughter is leaving for the U.S. that day and that if she wants to keep her daughter safe, she must reveal the details about Dong Noon's partner. Under pressure, Hyun Nam reveals that Dong Noon's partner is Yeo Jong a plastic surgeon and the son of the director of Seoul General Hospital. Shocked by this revelation, Yun Jin leaves. Later, Hyun Nam's drunken husband violently beats her for hiding their daughter from him. This altercation consumes a significant amount of time, and Hyun Nam is unable to make it to the airport to see her daughter one last time. Her daughter, waiting at the airport, eventually leaves in sadness. Days pass, and Hyun Nam brings a significant clue to Dong Noon. She presents pictures of an abandoned mortuary, where she suspects Maya Noah's corpse might be preserved. They secretly visit the location and notice that the meter reading is fresh, indicating that some freezers have been operating recently. Later, Dong Noon shares this clue with Yeo Jong. He decides to purchase the abandoned mortuary. The following day, after acquiring the property, they both enter the mortuary and discover that Maya Noah's corpse is indeed stored in one of the freezers. A local worker tries to stop them, stating that Officer Shin had instructed him not to let anyone in. However, Yeo Jong asserts that, as the new owner of the property, he has all the rights to access it. Yeo Jong then explains to Dong Noon that he had extracted a piece of Yun Jin's DNA from her injured foot during her anesthesia, inflicted by Maya Noh before he died. They can now match this DNA with the DNA extracted from under Yun Jin's nails, providing a crucial piece of evidence against her. The scene shifts to Chu Jong Ho, a colleague of Dong Noon at the school. Dong Noon catches him red-handed, 
taking inappropriate photographs of young children. She discreetly removes the SD card from his camera and sends it to Jae Joon. Jae Joon is shocked to see that the pedophile teacher has taken inappropriate photographs of Yi Sol and other kids. Furious, he rushes to the school the next day and violently assaults Chu Jon Ho in front of everyone. Yi Sol witnesses the brutal side of Jae Joon and becomes fearful of him. Jae Joon is subsequently taken to the police station for assaulting a school teacher. He explains that his actions were driven by Chu Jon Ho's criminal behavior. However, the police argue that he should have reported the incident rather than taking matters into his own hands. Do Yang arrives to bail Jae Joon out, releasing him from police custody. Jae Joon confronts Do Yang questioning why he is interfering in his personal affairs, especially regarding Yi Sol. The confrontation escalates into a physical fight, with Du Yang and Jae Joon exchanging blows until they are both bleeding. When Yun Jin returns home, she finds Du Yang in a furious mood. She tries to talk to him, but he tells her to leave him alone. Pressed for answers, Du Yang demands to know why she kept the truth about Yi Sol's real father a secret. He questions why she married him despite already being pregnant with Jae Joon's child. Yun Jin is left speechless, and Du Yang storms out angrily. Meanwhile, Dong Eun's alcoholic mother misuses Dong Eun's phone to send inappropriate messages to her colleagues and even invites a teacher to dinner where she humiliates her. The next day, the school staff convene and report her mother's behavior to the administration, leading to Dong Eun's expulsion. Dong Eun returns home, devastated and furious with her mother. She finds her mother with her new boyfriend and confronts her in tears. She tells her mother that her greed has caused endless suffering and that she has now crossed all boundaries. Dong Eun demands that her mother leave immediately or she will call the police. In a fit of rage, her mother stabs Dong Eun in the face. Fortunately, the wound is minor, but it leaves a significant scar on her heart. Dong Eun steps outside into the rain, where she sits in her car, pressing a cloth to her bleeding face as she sobs in pain. Meanwhile, Jae Joon, still furious from his fight with Do Yang, heads towards Dong Eun with the intention of confronting her about Do Yang's motives. However, Yeo Jong arrives just in time to intervene and protect her from Jae Joon's aggression. A few days later, Dong Eun visits the church where she has arranged for local gangsters to deliver drugs to Lee Sa Ra. The gangsters send a message to the church's WhatsApp group with Lee Sa Ra's location and details of her activities. When the church members arrive, they are horrified to find Lee Sa Ra in an intoxicated state, engaging in self-gratification. The scene is captured on camera and quickly spreads across social media. Yun Jin, who is also at the scene, watches Dong Eun with a cold stare. Dong Eun confronts her, saying, this is just the beginning. Next, it's your turn. The next day, Sunhee publicly posts Yun Jin's 18-year-old bullying report, detailing what she did to Sohee and Dong Eun. The report spreads like wildfire, and soon, everyone in the country is discussing and condemning Yun Jin. With no other option, Yun Jin retreats to her mother's temple, spending the night there to avoid social interactions. Du Yang comes to fetch Yun Jin, insisting that if she does not return home and address the public, his company's stock value will fall. Du Yang hires top-class lawyers for Yun Jin's case, but she appears indifferent. She dismisses the case, claiming that the accusations are merely rumors and that there is no evidence against her, so she has nothing to worry about. Meanwhile, Jae Jun is spending time with Hai Jong in his apartment and decides to set a date for their wedding. On the other hand, Yun Jin receives a voice recording from Mai Oa's phone and is shocked to discover that Hai Jong was the one who shared it with everyone. Enraged, Yun Jin goes to Jae Jun's house, where Hai Jong is now staying. She demands to know why Hai Jong shared the recording. Hai Jong responds that Yun Jin deserves this exposure and that everyone should know the sins she has committed. Yun Jin retorts that there is no concrete evidence linking her to Mai Oa's murder and dismisses the recording as worthless before storming out. Hai Jong goes to the police station where Lee Sa Ra is being held captive. She informs Lee Sa Ra that Yun Jin funded the media to widely spread footage of Sa Ra using drugs as a diversion, aiming to shift public attention away from her own case. This revelation infuriates Lee Sa Ra. Lee Sa Ra manages to secure bail and returns home, determined to get revenge on Yun Jin. She has a secret weapon up her sleeve, real footage of Yun Jin bullying Sohee 18 years ago. In the footage, Yun Jin is seen harassing Sohee for wearing a dress that Yun Jin claims is a cheap imitation of her own outfit. Yun Jin orders her to publicly strip off her clothes. 
The later footage, which wasn't previously recorded, shows Yun Jin pushing So Hee from the top of a building after burning her clothes. These revelations spread like wildfire across the internet. Du Yang reads the allegations and is shocked to learn that Yun Jin was not only a bully but also a ruthless murderer. Du Yang decides to meet Dong Nun one last time. During their meeting, she tells him that this is his final chance to get a divorce and leave Yun Jin behind as her future is now in ruins. Du Yang agrees, stating that if the allegations prove to be true, he will definitely proceed with the divorce. The next day, Dong Noon is at Yeo Jong's house, checking through his drawers. She stumbles upon a cabinet full of letters from the jail. As she reads through them, she is taken aback by the extremely hurtful language written in them. On the other hand, Yeo John goes to the prison to apply for a job there. He plans to get revenge on his father's murderer by working in the same prison. The murderer was originally sentenced to death, but due to some officials' interference, the sentence was commuted to life imprisonment. Yeo John has been deeply troubled by this decision and has always wanted to see his father's killer dead. When Yeo John and the murderer meet in prison, their mutual hatred is intense. Yeo John tries to understand the murderer's motive but the murderer mockingly explains that he enjoyed the sight of blood flowing out of the body, much like how doctors enjoy their work. This response infuriates Yeo Jong, who vows to make the murderer's life a living hell. When Yeo Jong returns home, Dong Noon greets him with a meal of noodles she has prepared. He eats gratefully, and she hugs him, thankful for his support as she is very close to achieving her revenge. Deep down, she senses that Yeo Jong is also suffering in his own way. The next day, on the school's playground, Dong Noon apologizes to Yi Sol, explaining that Yi Sol did nothing wrong and that she is deeply sorry for the suffering caused by her mother. Yi Sol is confused and asks where she is going. Dong Noon tells her that she is leaving the school and that this is goodbye. This news leaves Yi Sol feeling quite depressed. That night, Mi Hee is still in her room. When Dong Noon tells her to leave the apartment because she is moving out, Mi Hee deliberately starts a fire in the room. Knowing that Dong Noon has a fear of burning, she tries to stop her by grabbing her feet. But Mi Hee is too intoxicated to comprehend her daughter's distress. The entire scene is captured by a hidden camera in the room. With the evidence in hand, Dong Noon takes her mother to a psychiatric hospital. After evaluating her mental health, the doctors diagnose her as mentally ill and admit her to the psychiatric ward. Dong Noon hugs her mother for the last time telling her that this is all she can do for someone as cruel as her. Meanwhile, Yun Jin seeks help from Officer Shin, who reveals that he did not bury Mayo Noah's corpse, but rather stored it in the freezer of an abandoned mortuary. This revelation puzzles Yun Jin, as she believed the body had already been buried the day Mayo no died. They go to the mortuary and are astonished to find that Mayo Noah's corpse is no longer there. Yun Jin, furious, slams her expensive purse against the freezer so hard that part of it breaks off. Yun Jin then goes to meet Jae Joon, asking him for help since he is the biological father of their child, Yi Sol. However, he hesitates to offer assistance, knowing that she has become a murderer and no longer wants to be associated with her. Later, Jae Joon invites Du Yang to his house and shares the recording from Maya Noah's phone with him. He tells Du Yang that Yun Jin is a murderer and suggests that he should divorce her and grant him custody of Yi Sol. Du Yang responds firmly, saying that he should stop dreaming about gaining custody of Yi Sol. When Yun Jin returns home and sees her expensive purse cabinet, she remembers that she lost a piece of her purse at the mortuary when she slammed it against the freezer, fearing it might be used as evidence against her. She rushes back to the mortuary to find the missing piece. There, she is caught by Yeo Jong. When she asks why he is there, Yeo Jong reveals that he owns the property. Surprised, Yun Jin rushes outside. Yeo Jong stops her and returns the missing piece of her purse, saying that they have stronger evidence of her crimes and don't need such trivial items. Meanwhile, Hyun Nam has set up her alcoholic husband to threaten Hong Yun Ae. Following Dong Noon's plan, he sends messages every day claiming that he knows her daughter is a murderer who has killed two people. This causes her to become terrified, prompting her to decide to kill him. She goes to the temple and gives a billion won to the monk, asking for help in killing Hyun Nam's husband. She then persuades Officer Shin, who is unwilling to assist in her wrongdoing, to accompany her in the car on a rainy night. He reluctantly agrees. The monk calls Hyun Nam's alcoholic husband and lures him to stand in the middle of the road claiming that he can find crucial evidence there that could make him rich. Meanwhile, Hong Young Ae deliberately speeds up the car in the rain and hits him, 
killing him instantly. At the police station, she tries to present herself as innocent, attributing the incident to the rainy conditions. Later, Dong Eun surprises the monk by revealing that she knows how they killed Hai and Nam's husband. She threatens him, saying that if she wants to protect herself from the police, she must cooperate with her. Meanwhile, Officer Shin goes to his locker to get money so he can escape abroad. His men demand money from him, but he slaps them in return, saying they were not helpful. This angers them, and they hit him in the head with a sledgehammer, killing him on the spot. On the other hand, Hyun Nam learns about her husband's death and starts crying, her tears reflecting both joy and pain. Yun Jin visits her mother, who is hiding at the temple to avoid police custody. As the monk performs her usual rituals, she suddenly sees the ghost of So Hee and says that her soul has returned to seek revenge. Yun Jin is terrified when she sees monk acting as if she is being suffocated by So Hee's spirit. The monk succumbs to death during the ritual, and Yun Jin, horrified, runs away. Later, Yun Jin meets with Hai and Nam and offers her as much money as she wants for her husband's death, urging her to stay silent. This infuriates Hai and Nam who slaps Yun Jin and tells her she knows everything about her. She declares that it's best if they never speak again. Do Yang witnesses this confrontation. He gives Yun Jin a final ultimatum that if she admits to her wrongdoings, he will forgive her and they can stay together. If not, he will proceed with the divorce. She refuses to acknowledge her mistakes and asserts that their relationship ended the day he met Dong Eun. In response, Du Yang calls his lawyer to prepare the divorce papers. The news of Du Yang and Yun Jin's separation spreads rapidly across the nation, with many speculating that the separation is linked to Yun Jin's bullying scandal. She tries to maintain a fake smile pretending that everything is normal despite the chaos. She gives a media talk in which she pretends to be a victim and cries to gain sympathy. She says that So He was his friend and fake rumors are been spread about her. Later, when Yun Jin meets with Yi Sol, she tries to reassure her that the argument between her and her dad will be resolved and everything will be okay. However, Yi Sol surprises her by revealing that she has heard everything and now hates her. She says that bullies deserve to be punished, breaking Yun Jin's heart. The next day, Du Yang visits Yi Sol at her school, where she is visibly distressed. He embraces her, and she starts crying over her parents' separation. Meanwhile, Mayanoa's corpse is found by the police and returned to his relatives for the funeral. At the funeral, Hai Jong shows footage of Lee Sa Ray doing drugs, claiming that these were the same sexual acts performed with Mayanoa while she was drunk 18 years ago. This enrages Lee Sa Ray who then takes a sharp pencil and stabs it into Hai Jong's throat. The police intervene, arresting Lee Sa Ray for attempted murder and sending Hai Jong to the hospital. In the hospital, Hai Jong miraculously survives, but doctors reveal that she will never be able to speak again due to severe throat damage. Seeing her condition, Jae Joon heartlessly breaks up with her, saying he cannot live with someone who cannot speak. He leaves her crying in the hospital bed. Jae Joon goes to Yeo Jong's clinic and asks if he's involved with Dong Eun. Yeo Jong denies it and while talking to him notices that Jae Joon has glaucoma. He informs Dong Eun of this discovery, sparking an idea in her. Dong Eun goes to the hospital and shares the information with Hai Jong, suggesting that she could get revenge on Jae Joon by replacing his glaucoma medication with a sanitizer, which would render him blind. Driven by a desire for revenge, Hai Jong visits Yeo Jong's house under the pretense of forgetting something in the bathroom. Yeo Jong, feeling sympathetic, lets her in. Once in the bathroom, Hai Jong replaces the eye medication with sanitizer and leaves, giving Yeo Jong a middle finger as she departs. The next day, Jae Jun goes to visit Yi Sol at school but is stunned to learn that she has been transferred abroad. Frustrated, he tries to call Dong Eun while driving but suddenly experiences blurred vision. He applies the eye drops, which Hai Jong had replaced with sanitizer, and soon everything turns dark. Unable to see, he crashes his car into a truck, sustaining injuries. Disoriented, he stumbles onto the roof of an under-construction building. A suited man, who is actually Du Yang, pushes him off the edge and he falls into a large cement pond and drowns. Meanwhile, Dong Eun visits Hong Yun Ae and proposes a deal that if Hong Yun Ae gives her the actual batch of Yun jeans that was dropped at So He's death site, she will help her avoid consequences for the murder of Hai and Nam's husband. She quickly agrees and hands over the real batch. When Yun Jin arrives, she sees Dong Eun exposing her mother's betrayal. Dong Eun returns the batch, saying she has better evidences than this and that this was just a test of loyalty between mother and daughter. Yun Jin, devastated by her mother's betrayal, breaks down in tears. Meanwhile, the police investigation wraps up, 
and all the evidence points to Yun Jin. She is arrested for two murders and sentenced to life imprisonment. Officer Chul congratulates Dong Moon on her successful revenge and apologizes for not bringing them to justice 18 years ago. In prison, Dong Moon visits Yun Jin and tells her that, despite finally getting her revenge, there's one secret about Mayano that Yun Jin will never uncover. This secret, Dong Un explains, is Yun Jin's punishment, an endless curiosity knowing she wasn't the only one involved in Mayano's death. Dong Un doesn't reveal the secret directly, but it's shown in flashbacks that after Yun Jin severely injured Mayano with a champagne bottle, he was still alive and called for help from Guan Haiyun, his employee. Haiyun, having been a victim of Mayano's bullying, refused to help him. Overcome with rage and recalling her own past abuse, she struck Mayanoa's head with another bottle, killing him. Later, feeling regretful, Hyun called Dong Moon for assistance. Dong Moon reassured her, clarifying that she was not responsible for Mayanoa's murder and that Yun Jin was the actual murderer. She calmed her, affirming that she had done the right thing and promising to handle the situation. Later, after achieving her revenge, Dong Moon spends a romantic evening with Yeo Jong at the park. However, she suddenly disappears after saying goodbye. She heads to the same building where So He was killed, declaring that her life's aim has been fulfilled and she can now die peacefully. Just as she is about to end her life, Yeo Jong's mother arrives and stops her, urging Dong Moon to remember that her son desperately needs her and that she is his only hope. Moved by her words, Dong Moon decides to continue helping Yeo Jong. She returns to him, apologizes, and they express their feelings for each other. Dong Moon pledges to assist Yeo Jong in seeking his revenge. Dong Moon returns to So He's grave, congratulating her that their lives, which were disrupted 18 years ago, have now officially started anew. She reflects that they are both like 19 year olds once again. All the bullies have met their respective outcomes. Lee Sa Rae has been arrested for attempted murder, Hai Jong has lost her voice, Jae Joon and Myeon Oh have died painful deaths and Yun Jin has been sentenced to two life terms. Dong Un's plan has succeeded in completely destroying Yun Jin's life, leaving her isolated and abandoned by her daughter, husband, friends, and even her own mother. In prison, Dong Un applies for a teaching position while Yeo Jong begins his work as a doctor. On a cloudy day outside the prison, they share a heartfelt moment and express their love for each other. With their bonds stronger than ever, the stage is set for the next chapter in their quest for revenge.